Hello and thank you very much for pressing that play button. My name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk. You know if you've painted with me before, you know there's going to be a quick short introduction, but let me show you today what I want you to do with me. Yes, join me in the studio today where we're going to be painting this fantastic seascape in a Bob Ross style only in acrylics. There's no oils involved, so let's have some fun. Nice. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your and thank you very much for taking up the invitation time. and joining me in the studio. My name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and um, as you know, we're going to be painting a fantastic seascape. Yes, with a little bit of a difference. So I thought, let's say get straight to the canvas, stop the waffle and let's have a look at the paints we're going to be using. And as you can see, the paints are there. So we've got Rizzer and Crimson, Cadenham Yellow, Filo Green, um, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, Van Dyke Brown. I know it doesn't look like as if there's a lot there, but I'll show you something in a minute. So Mars Black, it's a Titanium White. I'm also going to be using some of my Liquid Clear, which I've put in my pot, and my Medium Mix Flow Improver, which stops under binding. That's been in, air, in there and in there. It's just putting put in there. And uh, I've had about 50% water to that. And um, that's all you need to stop your paints from under binding. Um, and the brushes, well, we've got a, a selection of brushes. I've got several blenders on the go. I've got a few... Um, this is a three quarter inch short flat square or bright uh, depending where in the world you live. I've got a few fan brushes and these are brushes that I've actually cannibalized. I've actually cut off a bit here, a bit there and made those myself. Um, there is a video available for you to look at that, um, but we'll not go down that road at the moment. I'll explain as I use them. Um, I'm using a little filbert, that's a number 10. And um, I use another filbert, it's number eight. And I'm using a little um, angled shader, that's in a half. And I've got a couple of um, script liners on the go. And I'm also going to be using a palette knife today. Now, if you haven't got a palette knife, don't worry. You should be able to do this with a brush. But for the instance of this demonstration uh, today, I'm going to be using a palette knife. Okay. So I want to replicate um, another Bob Ross style painting. Yes, because I, lo I love these things. And um, this is the last one I'm going to do in the series for, for a while now. Um, because th this is going to be another seascape. So I thought would be nice if we try to replicate as precisely as I, as I can as far as the difference between oils and acrylics are immense. So what I wanted to do is just put a little, I'm just putting a little square in there with a little top on and a couple of little lines and that's all the drawing I'm doing today. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> um, when the camera zooms in you'll see that actual dem that, that, um, uh, the, the drawing. <laughs> right, let's, let's get some painting done. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you should be able to see. I've, all I've done is a little square, a little half a circle. There we are, and a couple of lines. That's all we need. That's it. Now, let's have a look. I've got some kitchen roll in my hand. Let's get that ready. I'm going to go into my my soft, um, short flat square, um, bright, whatever you call it, and I'm going to pick up some liquid clear. This is my liquid clear formula. Um, which is available on the um, website if you want to pop along. Um, there are the other demonstrations that I'm doing, but as I said, this is going to be the last one in this type I'm going to be doing for, for a few weeks now because I want to go back to some beginner lessons and things. So this is more of a intermediately advanced type of painting. Um, but have a go, have a go. All I'm doing is just going to put a, a nice even coat of this onto the canvas. Actually, I tell you what I could do. I tell you what I could do first. Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself then. Let's get some masking tape. This is painter's tape. Um, we need to put a little bit of a rising line, really, don't we? We do. So let's get some masking tape out. And we'll put it, I don't know, maybe there, see? There, there, there. Just, just, just under half, I would say. Yeah, that'd be okay like that. There we are. Yeah, we needed to do that first. <laughs> doesn't matter, doesn't matter. There we are, there we go. Nothing lost there, and let's continue putting this liquid clear on. Now this liquid clear, I've got to say, every single video that I do is my own make. It is not any, any got nothing to do, any relation to Bob Ross's liquid clear. That is oil-based. It is not recommended for use with 
acrylics because it won't work it really will not work you will have a mess and vice versa you can't use this with oil so please don't think you can mix and match these things and um, it's a bit of a mistake on my part I should never have called it liquid clear <laughs> but I got so used to using that product um, many years ago and, and it just seemed like a good idea to call it the same thing because it does exactly the same thing but um, yeah how are we looking on the camera we've got a little bit of glare going on there haven't we we have we've got a bit of glare going on there and I'm gonna see if I can cure that in a minute but all we need to put let's put this on first and let's see if we can't adjust the light in before we continue so well, don't worry you know you're not there's not gonna be any breaks in the filming I'll hold the light in and I come back to this because the liquid clear can stay wet for quite a while actually um, I've had quite a few hours use out of it it all depends how you use it and the, the, and, and the way you use it um, so I'm, I'm putting on a, a nice thin coat of this I don't want it to be too wet and I'm, I normally take some off with a kitchen roll but I'm gonna leave that settle down for a minute and I'm just going to adjust my light in, so please bear with me one second. Okay, so I adjusted the exposures on the cameras. I do apologise now if if, it's, if my face is a bit bright and that's a bit dark. That's what happens sometimes, and you can see the palette is obviously a little bit darker as well. So I've had to up the exposure on that one, but that's basically to stop the glare coming off this canvas. Otherwise, it would be a pointless me carrying on. So okay, so we've we've put that liquid clear on, as you can see. I'm going to take a little bit off with a little bit of kitchen roll like that just lightly go over and just making sure this all into all the edges now half the canvas there we go let's put a little line there I don't know if you can see that you should be able to see it like a just a little uh, mark I put there <laughs> so um, a little bit of Rizzer and Crimson just a Rizzer and Crimson plain a Rizzer and Crimson this is heavy body paint this is quite thick and um, this is one of the key things that you need to think about is thicker paint now if you if you are just using standard paints then it can still do it but you might not get um, the same effect this is slightly thicker and with using this on the with the liquid clear it actually keeps it from drying it keeps the paint open and there are thickening agents that I've developed um, which are on the website if you're just using standard paint you can buy some of that and it's thickening up for you and um, you should be able to do this technique no problem at all so that's just plain a Rizrin crimson there like that and as you can see it's transparent it is so I'm just going to wash my brush very very quickly and I'm just going to wipe that with a bit of kitchen roll Chuck, where's my bin there it is and um, this this is what Bob Ross did prior to filming so um, you might still see a bit of a red glare on that now because I've turned the exposures down um, now we want equal parts of red arisen and crimson and equal parts of phyllo green so it's about the same amount each and mix those two together and what you're going to do with this you're going to get a lovely grey colour trust me there's a lovely grey colour and if you don't believe me let's put a little bit of paint by there let's pick up a small brush any old brush will do it just to show you undertone color get a bit of white and mix it on there and you can see we've got a lovely greeny gray so let's add a little bit more red to that because I'm not I want it to be a little bit warmer than that so it's important that you try and get equal parts of this so let's have a look and we'll just add a little bit of white to that again and this is a way you can see with purples and things you can see that's a lot grayer now than that that's okay I can live with that and um, let's make sure we load our brush and I'm loading my brush like this I'm just going to take off some excess okay and then we come to there so we want to put this now up to that line and put this all over that liquid clear make sure you've got a nice even coat of this onto the black and uh, mix it in with the liquid clear now the traditionally um, this was done by William Alexander and then taken on board with Bob Ross and he went around the countryside and um, teaching people how to do these methods and black canvases and grey canvases were one of his favorite things to paint on and um, 
and, and they are mine too. So I'm just carrying on a tradition, but what I'm doing, I'm taking my the, the, the love of oils, which I can't work with anymore because of health reasons, um, the love of oils into acrylics. It's taken me a long, long time to learn. Where's my bin? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> to learn this. And like I said, traditionally with oils, if you were working in oils, you could do this, cover this completely with liquid clear and you could be there for days actually working with this. You could because it takes a long time for oils to dry. Uh, acrylics, well, they got their own method, haven't they? They dry quick. The liquid clear keeps it open a little bit longer, but not as long as it would do if you were working with oils. So what I tend to do is when I'm doing methods like this, I'll do half the canvas, dry it off and then do the other half. And that's what we're trying to accomplish today. So now plain white, plain old white paint. Plain old white paint on the same brush. All I've done is wiped that brush clean. Excess off, important. Don't overload this brush. And then you pick a point and you, you start to, to turn the brush, just the edge of that brush. Exactly the same thing as Bob Ross used to do. But I'm using a, a quarter inch brush instead of a two inch brush. And then just blend that in, move it in like a big, cloud my phone is going off and i'm not answering it and then put it in blend it in like this the circles circle 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 circles and if you, if you lift your brush off and don't put so much pressure on you'll get a finer more distant looking cloud formation there we go very very lightly like that and then we could put a couple of wispier ones in there like this. Don't worry if you're picking up on a little bit of red. You don't go all the way over. Don't worry if you're picking up a little bit of red there. That's not a problem. Well, that looks like it's, it's, it's further in the distance. You could put a couple of stringy ones in like this. You can go to town. Now, the further away these clouds are, the closer and more compact they tend to get. And this is going to be a nighttime scene because I've done a few nighttime scenes lately. And I think it's important that we continue that method around. So just lightly, lightly, lightly put these stringy little things in like this. And as the further away they get, the closer to the horizon they get, the smaller and more condensed these things are. Because this is quite a, a, um, a cloud filled night. There you go. Just there you go like that. And let's get a bit more white. And let's put a, a big one in now, a bit closer, a bit more white. There you go. And let's just bring him down like this. And whichever way you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. All you're doing is just developing a cloud. There you go. Be loose with this. Be loose with these clouds. And again, take in the excess off your brush. Sweep up sweep up to the bottom like that. Now, putting that brush there, getting rid of my kitchen roll. I'm picking up my blending brush, um, and this is a pony hair blending brush. And I will have a few of these available on the website, so if you want to pop along and buy them, or you can pop into any hobby craft shop, they should have these. And then now very, very lightly, very, very lightly, I'm just checking my cameras, very, very lightly. Very, I'm not touching, it's, it's, it's just like, if you get your hand like that and just tickle the back of your hand, it really tickles, just tickle the back of your hand like that. That's so light, you're not doing this, see the brush? You're not doing that, you're very, oh, you're just tickling the back of your hand. So think of the canvas as the back of your hand and have a little laugh to yourself and try and tickle your back of your hand. And that's all you're gonna do is try and tickle the back of your hand. Now, acrylics are not like oils. They are very, very slippery. They'll move around on this canvas. And if you push too hard, you're going to ruin the effect. Up, sweep up, sweep up. Acrylics are notorious. They're plastic and they like to slide about. They like as if they got skates on. So you, you want to take the skates off them. And if you use this brush really, really well, it's taken me a long time to find out the, to find the brush can actually do this for me. You don't want anything too hard. You want it really, really soft. Sometimes a watercolor brush or something similar would do the same thing. And I'm just tickling the back of my hand there you go, just tickling the back of my hand, sweeping up, just tickling the back of my hand, just getting all that 
fluffy, 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 fluffiness at that. Very, very lightly going in that distant dark. The night has just come in, and, and I'm again, I'm tickling the back of my hand, I'm brushing the back of my hand like that. Just, just, just feel the bristles touch the back of your hand, and you do exactly the same thing. If you're not too sure on the pressure, lift the brush off the canvas and just do this on the back of your hand. Or if you, if you, if you, if you've got an airy arm like me. <laughs> Just brush it so you can tickle the hairs on the back of your arm. There you go. That's a good. And if I, I'm not saying you women, have got, you ladies out there have got hairy arms. <laughs> so <laughs> just tickle the back of your hand like that. Just touch it. And then you use that same pressure. Use that same pressure on the canvas like that. And you'll find that this is going to blend in really, really, really well. Now, what we're going to do now, put that blending brush down. Let's put that there and let's pick up a bit more white paint and we're just working on these clouds and let's put another let's put another little cloud happy little cloud here like this and let's just put him in front of those other ones there you go and, it, and clouds are any shape it doesn't really matter just be loose just have fun let these things just float about wispy things if you want there you are. just float them about there you go like this Using the edge of the brush, there you go. That's all you need to do. I tell you, we could put a couple just here and there. I got to drop the C because the layer of the camera, I'm going to move my sit and I'm going to sit back. So if my head is in a shot of a couple of cameras, I do apologize. And then we just put a just put a few. Now I've got a, another painting in mind. Um, that I want to do in this style and I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to doing that one I'll most probably do that one towards the end of next month so uh, time is relative on YouTube so I'm not going to say what month that is <laughs> so if you, but if you've been watching me very very lightly back of your hand if you've been watching me and, uh, and, you're, and you're a regular viewer then you know what month I'm talking about <laughs> and if you don't then just check the i-cards. The i-cards are there. There, if you, you, there's a little a circle with an eye in it, and if if you just press that, you'll get you get these cards down, and they're little. Um, if you click on those, you can allow you can click on those, and then that's going to take you up and up and up and up. That's going to take you into a video or a playlist on my website. If you're interested in some products, you can pop along to www.kyoclay5r.co.uk where you can purchase stuff like my blending whites and my medium mixes and and um, it has been said that Clive you are promoting your stuff on on YouTube all the time I'm not here to watch you sell your products if I didn't sell products I wouldn't be able to make videos and if I didn't make videos you wouldn't be able to learn so that's it's a business at the end of the day and I've got to do it so I appreciate um, anybody that will take time just to have a look what I've got now Make sure this brush is really clean. Get it up, get it in there, get it all nice and clean. Don't forget, it's not going to dry in this brush very well because of the liquid clear. Now, very lightly, back of your hand, very lightly across your whole canvas. Just take those brush strokes out. Very, very lightly, brush strokes out. Now, acrylic dries matte. So when this dries, it's going to have a matte finish to it. Now it might take a while to dry, but trust me, when it dries, it dries matte. And I'll show you the one I'm working off at the moment because I've already painted this one once. And it's good to do that sometimes because I learn a lot by that as well. There you go. Very, very easy. Now I'm going to wash my brushes. Now I wash my brushes in warm water and in one pail and go straight into some cold water in the other pail. And I just use common baby soap. That's all I do. So I'm just going to clean our brush, get the moisture out and I'm going to put that one side, let it dry because they've got to be really, really dry. You cannot use a wet blender with this technique. It will not work. So it's important. Where's my bin? Oh, there it is. It's important that you have a few of those if you can, if you're using this technique. Okay, now I need to wash that brush because we were using white. 
very, 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 very important to this one. Now I've got to remember where I put that drawing because I can't for the life of me, I can't see it. So I hope you can. <laughs> anyway, get some yellow. I'm going to pull a bit of yellow through. I'm going to bring a little bit of yellow ochre to that. Pull a little bit of yellow ochre to it. There you go. I want a nice warm yellow at the moment. Plus I'm also going to bring a little bit of white to that. Now the reason I'm adding a bit of white to it is because the a paint can be a little bit transparent and I don't want it to shine through too much. I want it to be bright. This is going to be a bright spot in my painting. Now I've got to remember where I actually put that drawing but I mean we can start it there. I want a nice bright bright spot like that. Now what I'm going to do, where's my bin? There it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the residue off my brush. Now, very, very lightly, I'm just going to crisscross, just going to pick up out of that bright spot. You can see it's sliding. It wants to slide. It doesn't want to stay in one place. It doesn't like it. No, it doesn't. But we want to pick that up, bring that out like that. And you can see it's turning orange. It certainly is. Now picking up a little bit of white, just running my brush through there like that again, excess off the brush. And I'm just going to bring in a bit of white around like that. Just destroyed my clouds. That's how it happens like that sometimes, don't mind. We can put them back in later. Let's just get that glow. that white glow to come down orange yellow don't forget there's a rizzer and crimson there you can have a little bit of pink in that sky let's pick up a bit of yellow on the brush back in back out get that yellow to mix in Our oil paints very thick and it tends to it likes to stick and it likes to build up around and you can't do that with acrylics oh. <laughs> the camera rush out they make a dog alert <laughs> my dog is running around the studio chasing my cat and uh, there we are yeah. Ooh, we're there we are Right, a bit more yellow. Let's get a let's bring a bit of that yellow there. I'm not too happy with the thickness of that. There you go. Just added a bit more white to it. That's better. That's better. Little crisscross strokes. running around chasing my cat bull and uh, oh I'm out of breath like an old man there you go bit of light coming down there like okay let's put that brush in the Water. I'm going to get another blending brush, exactly the same brush, no difference, and don't forget, tickle the back of your hand, yes, tickle the back of your hand, and very lightly, blend that in, make it all misty and murky and mazy, I've got new words in my dictionary, misty, misty, mazy, <laughs> I don't know, I've forgotten what they were now, <laughs> to write them down next time, there we go, so just, and you can bring that out, Bring it out from the centre like that. I can see if there's a little bit of a light zinging through. And it is light. This is going to be light. There you go. There we go. There we are. Because what we're going to be putting here today is a lighthouse. It is. 
So that's the glow from the bulb, the big light. That's what they call a light. <laughs> uh, I enjoy myself in the studio, I really do. There we are, so, okay. Let's get another brush now. Let's go, I'm gonna just go straight into this little filbert brush a minute. And I'm gonna, I wanna put a cloud in there. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this and a little bit of that. There you go. Mix a little bit of the Arisen Crimson and Filo Green mix. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to it. I just wanna put a little cloud shapes in here. Like that, like as if they can just, just see those things through there like that. Yeah, just to add a little bit of, like as if there's clouds that are just flowing through. You can't see them really because the, the, the shine off that of that light that is doing the job. So I'm gonna have to move in front of the camera a minute and then I just wanna blend them through like that. Just disappear them, disappearing them, making them disappear. There you go. That's okay, that'll do, that's fine. Now let's pick up this color again. I'm gonna get my mark stick for this one. And then I'm gonna put, where can I put this? Let's put a, Let's put some uh, moonlight on this painting. There we are. Crescent moon. And we pick up some pure white. And when I do um, paintings like this, they're, they're never direct copies of what I've seen and practiced over the years and I painted this one several times over the years uh, in oils and um, I found that I've altered, always altered them slightly and this was one of the lessons I used to do just concentrating one of the lessons I used to do many years ago when I was teaching a little bit of oil painting I'll just put a little bit of a a light glow there because if you look at a crescent moon you'll you can just out about make out sometimes the rest of the moon there you go and what we're going to do in we'll add a bit more white to that after when we've um when we've dried this off and what we could do now we could put a little bit of highlight on the tops of these clouds like this just with a small brush, just to lift. Like as if that light is just singing through, because that's going to be a lot brighter when we finish with it. There, right, just go. Yeah, there, there, yeah, like that. Like as if that long light, that, it's just catching these clouds. Just giving us a little bit of shape. There you go. Well, we're going to have to put a bit of moonlight down here later on and it's just put the very top of that cloud there like that and then just a little bit across that one there increase the white there a bit and then again getting our brush let's put our mark stick down there and then very very lightly again just make sure I'm not in shot very lightly again tickle the canvas tickle that canvas be very careful don't move this paint around too much because it's going to want to slide and that's not what you want you want it to merge into itself this is a blending technique and you could do this painting in 30 to 40 minutes once you've painted it a couple of times and then you can amaze your friends by doing this you could set up a canvas and I, which I do on, on occasion I, I go to craft fairs and craft and I got a craft store and this is the type of painting that I can do but I don't show them I don't show them that I put that liquid clear on. All I show them is just adding colour to white and it just absolutely blows them away. And it's true, it does work. Very, very lightly. Blend that in. Tickle, 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 tickle. And we'll come back to that at a later stage. Now, I'm just gonna wash my brushes and I'm gonna dry that off with a hairdryer because I want that to become dry. Um, Yes, I do. I want to want that to come dry. So that's what I'm going to do is wash my brushes and dry it off with a hairdryer. 
she'll be back now. I've dried that off. I want to show you how I dry these. Now these are pony hair brushes, like blending brushes, so I've washed them out. Bit of soap, bit of water, make sure it's all nice and clean. I get my hair dryer. And I just do that. And I just do that, give it a hair dryer. Yeah. I can cut and low dry. Cut and low dry, so I can. I'll do that until it's dry. Simple. Okay, so oh, yeah. yeah, and a good thing about doing that is um they come all back all fluffy like this. Yeah, see? That's a good tip. Now, what I need to do now is I've dried that. As you can see, um, I hope you can see on the cameras, there may be a little bit of a glare there, but it's not 100% dry. It, it can't because <laughs> it doesn't want to dry this stuff. It doesn't really want to dry. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt something I've never done before. So <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit more liquid clear. And I'm going to put a bit more liquid clear just over that area there, like that. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want this to move about a bit and this is the easiest way I can think of at the moment. I've never tried this before so it might be a complete mess. <laughs> you know the worst enemy of any acrylic paint. Do you know what the worst enemy of paint, acrylic paint is? I'll leave you have a little think about that one. Right I'm just going to increase that lightness. Now this is just going to go, it's not going to change colour with anything there now. It's just going to brighten that spot up. There you go. Because it's, no, it's not picking up anything. I haven't put anything else there. So I'm cleaning my brush really well. And I'm just going to... Very, very lightly... Bring the street marks out like this. I hope you can see them. From the centre out. I just want to bring those... Little street marks out like that. A little rays of light. Little rays of light, and we can increase on those in a minute. That's all I want to do is get those rays. I hope you can see. Can you see those rays of light? I hope you can. Let's, I'm just going to add a little bit more paint to it, and I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm just adding some little rays in. Now, when you do paintings like this, don't try not. Please try not to do them in the same time scale as all the other artists do because these paintings are designed and to be be taken to a certain point and then that's it but we could as artists as artists we can work on these for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and days yes we can <laughs> i'm gonna get my little where's my little blending brush i'll just use this one for now and again i'm very very likely just gonna i've just increased the brightness there I'm just going to pull that through again, like that. There we are. Can you see it looks like a, a brighter spot? I hope you can. I hope you can see that. I'm just going to give it a good old scrub on my kitchen roll. I don't want to clean that again if I can help it. Okay, so um, let's remove this tape. And again, you can see that we've got an horizon line there. Now, again, I better make sure this is clean. This is not the first time I put a dirty brush onto a nice clean canvas. Making sure this is dry now. Okay, the worst enemy of any acrylic, besides from grease, is water. It is. Water is its worst enemy. It's, acrylic is a plastic paint. It does not like, it does not like water. That's why you can wash it out with water. It doesn't, let me put some more of my liquid clear formula, that's that one there, in there. And you can see I don't use a lot. I've done several paintings with just that. You don't need a lot of this stuff, it's really good stuff. You can add one or two drops to your paint if you wanted to. It's not going to hurt your paint. If you wanted to open your paint up a little bit. So yes, water. It's... It's part of the makeup of the paint, but only to extend its quantity then. It, 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 you have an ounce, of, an ounce of paint and add 
another ounce of water so it's going to double its volume that's all what that's all the water does to the paint it, it doubles its volume but unfortunately it breaks down the molecular bonds of that paint now i'm going to be doing a bit more a bit, few more lessons on paint and it, it actually surprises me that you know you think you can just thin it down it's water-based paint it's water-based paint because you can wash it out in water and it's and it's soluble in water as long as it doesn't dry don't get it any close yeah it's a nightmare to get out the clothes actually in fabric because it, it will go into the into the fabric and you've got a job to get it out now I'm, I'm just carrying on and i'm playing this don't over thin your paint please don't over thin your paint with water you're gonna have trouble you really are okay paints are made up from pigment a binder which is what holds the pigment into the paint and then there's other things in the paint then to extend its drying time or um, its its viscosity or its thickness um, its volume again water is added to um, and other things is added to acrylic paint to extend its volume to get more for their money <laughs> thinner the paint less pigment the more water <laughs> that's all it is yes that's why I developed um, my own thickening agent because you can, you can thicken up most paint, most acrylic paints with that because it's acrylic based. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm just taking a bit off there. I'm just with my bin. Oh, there it is. I'm just getting some of this. Now, I want to go into a little bit of this same colour as I put in the sky. That's the cardamom red and the um, um, phyllo green and I'm just going to put that over the back of the painting like that trying to keep that line as straight as you can but it doesn't matter we can bleed it into the sky it'll just disappear let's put a bit of that dark color going down so far there like that and as we come down we're going straight into some phyllo green now and I'm going to bring some phyllo green there like this. So we had the cadmium, uh, uh, the uh, sorry, the uh, risen and crimson and phyllo green mix. Now I'm going into the phyllo green, and as I'm coming down, I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre, just on a very, just very small amount of yellow ochre. I just want to go across that edge like that. Yellow ochre is not as transparent, so don't worry if it looks a bit weird. I'm going to get a bit of, uh, where's it from? My Van Dyke Brown. I'm putting some Van Dyke Brown in there like that. Bringing that across there. Wiping my brush. Making sure I go back into the phyllo green, bringing that phyllo green into that colour. Just merging it together. There we are. Now we're going to have some fun. Now the fun begins. Where's my bin? There it is. Now the fun begins. Now I'm going to go. Let's get my um, fan brushes. These fan brushes have been chipped and chopped. So I got some smaller fans and some wider fans. I don't know if you can see. That's slightly wider than that. So because I've trimmed them, I've trimmed them down and I've scagged them a little bit and. This is what you can do when you get a little bit more advanced and you can play around with chopping your brushes. I'm not wetting that brush. Now normally I would wet my brush in water so my acrylics don't dry. Now I'm working opposite. I don't want my acrylics to dry and I can't add water to this really because it's going to be too slippy sloppy and I want it to be sticky rather than runny. And that's what I'm done. I'm going to go straight into some white and I'm loading that little fan brush up like that any old brush will do this is a nylon man-made fiber uh, fan brush that I'm using here and I've just trimmed the edges off so I made it a very smaller type of fan that's all I've done so if you can have a go at that and what I'm going to do now I'm going to use little marks like this little crescent moon shapes there we are and I'm just going to go across the painting like this in a rocking motion a 
leaving little dark troughs in between. Now I'm, I'm hoping that when I blended this, which I'm going to do in a minute, it's going to look as if the, the moonlight is catching and glinting on that. So I'm just going to sit back and see if I can get over here as well. You're not going to see much of this, but I need to put some in. You're not going to see much of this, but I need to put the colour in there. So I'm not too fussy about this side. You can see I haven't picked up any more paint. This is just a paint at the moment. And the, th the longer I apply this, the less paint is coming off my brush. A little bit more pressure I have to put on to the brush to get those marks. But when I do that, I get this lovely, lovely look of a moonlight wave formation which is which is what I'm doing I'm putting waves in now I'm going to pick up a little bit more white again taking some off my brush and I'm just going to go back in very lightly thinking now roughly where I should put these little highlights and this is quite a rough sea because we got a lighthouse <laughs> it will be there in a minute We've got a lighthouse and this lighthouse is, is, is I haven't got this light on for no reason because we've got stormy seas here today. Now I'm going to bring this on a bit of a, I, I want to come down on an arc like that so I need to bring these waves in now and I'm increasing the size, increasing the pressure on my brush, picking up a bit more paint. Leaving gaps, leaving gaps. My phone's going off terrible today. Leaving gaps, let's get, let's get these nice big stormy waves coming in. There you go, nice. These are gonna be big ones here, so let's put a couple of nice big waves coming in there and like this. Spend a bit of time, spend a bit of time, now get that brush and pull a little bit like this. I don't worry too much about teeth there, I just want to get these little marks coming in at the moment. Okay let's change that brush. Where did I put my fan brushes? There they are. I'm going to get this other brush now again, very, very dry. So I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to put the, the white on like this. And again, acrylics. I've, I've had to adapt um, these techniques to fit acrylics and Sometimes that's what takes the time. It's not so much the paint, but it was in this case. It's taken a long time to get the paint to, to do what I wanted to do. But in, in these type of paintings, it's, it's you've you've got to you've got to alter the technique sometimes to get the effect that you were looking for. So I put a bit of white across the top edge there, and now I'm going to just drag down very lightly like this. And I've seen no end of these type of scenes because I've got a lighthouse not too far from where I live. I've also got a few beaches as well, not just one beach. I've got access to about four or five beaches. It's 
nice stormy seas today. I wouldn't like to be out there on the boat. I certainly wouldn't like to be out there on the boat today. Once you get used to acrylics sliding across the surface, you'll find it's a lot easier. And I'm banking on that. Moon to be doing its job and picking up highlights here and there. Let's think. I'm not going to do any more to the waves here now because I want to put the lighthouse in place so I can I know where the sea is going to end up so I don't really know where I where I'm going at the moment with this there you go let's put a few more details in Let's get a few more little light bits here and there like that. Not so much detail in those. They're further away. You still see a little bit, but not much. I'm a bit overboard there, Clive. <laughs> Yeah, we can kill that. We can kill that. Let's just put that over there like that. Okay, let's just get our brush. Acrylics, so forgiving. They certainly are. Let's blend in that in. Like that. There's a little bit. Of a little less light here and there, just put a couple of breakers, there you go. To do now is put our lighthouse in. That's, that's just that's a thing. Let's get my hat off. My hat is my head is getting hot. My head gets hot in it, and uh, I don't know. So, look, how are we looking on the candles? That's looking pretty good, I think, isn't it? Yes, okay. So, I'm gonna mix up some um, Van Dyke brown and some burnt umber um, with a little bit of uh, my thickening agent, and I shall be back and I'll show what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I got a glass palette and I got some Van Dyke brown and a little bit of burned umber and I've mixed a little bit of my thickening agent to that and it's all nice and gooey. See how gooey that is? Can you see? Let me have a look. Let me get the camera. See how thick and gooey that is? It's like a meringue and that's what the thickening agent do to do. <laughs> my thickening agent does I should say to the paint and that's why I use it because I can use a palette knife in exactly the same way then with um, acrylics as Bob Ross did with oils and um, we will be doing lessons on mountains shortly I'm sure. Now get in the palette I'm picking up a little bit of paint like that a little roll of paint and I'm gonna go down spreading that across like that. Again little roll of paint and I've noticed that these lighthouses always much wider towards the bottom because that's where their strength lies. Just 
spread out across like that. Now, again, spreading the paint out. Again, cutting across, getting a little roll of paint. Do that again, Clive. A little roll of paint, and again, let's, let's get the size of this lighthouse. You don't have to do this. You can paint this on if you wanted to. But I thought, I thought it'd be nice if I did it in a traditional way, and it leads to a nicer type of texture onto this lighthouse. I thought. There you go. Spend a bit of time if you never use a palette knife before. As I said, if you haven't, used, if you haven't got a palette knife, use a brush. You don't have to thicken your paints. You can just paint this directly on. But I wanted to bring a little bit of texture into that lighthouse, like that. And I'm just going to try and round off the bottom a little bit like that. Okay, now cleaning the palette knife and I'm going to go into the top edge. Let's just see if I can get a little roll of paint on the top edge. I'm just going to put a little line like that. Them all off like that, there you are. And again, another little roll of paint. I'm going to go this side now and take your time. Take your time. Take your time. There you Let's put a little bit of a The contamination or not. Maybe that'll do. Right. Now let's put a little line there. A little line there like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna get my burnt umber. Again exactly the same way. Cut a little bit of roll of paint, a little roll of paint, a little roll of paint. And I'm gonna go on the back edge. And I'm just going to drag that across, like putting snow on a mountain, look. Like putting snow on a mountain. Yes, you can, with acrylics. If you've got my thickening agent, you can paint like Bob Ross. You certainly can. Yes, let's add a little bit of yellow. Let's get a little bit of yellow straight off the palette. Add in a little bit of yellow to that paint. So I'm brightening it up. You want to paint like Bob Ross in acrylics? This is the station to be on. This is the channel. It certainly is. Using your palette knife that way if you want, or whichever way is easiest for you, basically. And I'm just I'm gonna do is go straight down that one edge with our lighter colour. Like that. And then cleaning my palette knife off. I'm just putting a little bit of that paint, very very thin paint now. <laughs> this is, it's not even thickened this one. I'm just going to go straight down, just touching the canvas with a knife, letting the paint pull off the palette knife. This is exactly the same way as I used to do it in oils. Exactly the same way. Just a little bit of highlight just on that. Clean your brush off. And then you can just pull that through if you wanted to. There we are. It's very, very lightly. Very touch. Oh, I'm hardly touching our paint. Hardly touching our paint. Just a little bit of moonlight. We can alter that later on if we wanted to. Now, let's not waste this Van Dyke Brown. We've spent time thickening it up. So let's just get... Let's just spread that down like that. There we are. Bring that across. Let's make a couple of rocks. Nice rock face there. There we are. Bring that down. Bring that across there uh, like that. And just using up the paint now. Just using up the paint. This is could this could be a bit of a this could be a bit of a what's the word I'm looking for? Cliff. <laughs> Yes, hello, Cliff. That's what you call a that's what you call a man with a seagull on his head, Cliff. Yes, it certainly is. Okay, 
Sorry, my jokes got worse. They do, they do get worse. And just spread that. Let's just get that down there. Let's leave a nice bit of area down there for a beach. And just, just spread it on. Just spread it on. That's fine. Let's spread that on. Because we're going to dry that off in a second. Because we want it to go tacky. <laughs> Another tip. It is. Okay. Now we've still got some left. Let's um, let's put a let's put a building because he needs to live somewhere, doesn't he? So let's put a let's put a roof like that, come down like that, and let's get a bit of our burnt ember and just a little roll of paint if you can do it, a little roll of paint, and let's just put a like putting snow on the mountain, just put a couple of little dropping marks like that and a couple of little dropping marks like that. Okay, and let's, let's uh, fill that up. There you go. And now we need to put another roof on. Let's get a little touch of black. I'm going to touch a black to the mix. Just touch a black. Just added a bit of black to that. Look. Exactly like oil paints. Exactly like oil paints. This is why I like my thickening agent and I know I keep going on about my products but it's taken me a long time to develop them to get them like this and um, again let's put another roof let's put another roof over this so let's get another roof there like that and down another building block that in like that that doesn't matter yeah let's get a bit of light on that Not like much at the moment, it certainly doesn't, but we'll get there. And let's just clean up the bottoms of that. There you go. We can put a little bit of grass and things in there in a minute. There you go. So let's wipe my brush onto a bit of kitchen wrong. Let's get a little bit of that blue, light blue white. I'm just going to touch that and I'm just going to lighten this. Let's brown up. Let's get a little bit more of that. I want to lighten it up. Marble effect. Don't mix it all in. Nice roll of paint. Again, nice roll. Nice roll of paint. There we are. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. And let's just put a little bit of put a little bit of light. It's not quite light enough, really, is it? That's well. Just okay. That'll do. We want, it's a bit of moonlight, isn't it? So we don't want a lot of difference there. There we go. Get a little bit of black and let's just there you go. Look as if there's a couple of windows there, and then we know I, I know that lighthouses have got little windows in them. Like that. So let's put a couple of those in. Because you need to see how we get up there. There you go. That's all done. There we go. So we need to clean my palette off. And if this goes hard on the palette, you just need to spray it with a little bit of water and get a, 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 a sharp knife or a palette knife and even just scrape it off and chuck it in the bin. You can, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up. So one second while I do that. Okay, looking good so far. What I wanna do now is I wanna put a bit more um, detail into this foreground before I, I i want to dry that with a hairdryer because i want that to get tacky now that's a that's a way i found that i could do that and um so i'm going to straight back into some of this white and small brush again and now i'm, I'm going to put another wave there like that Again, back into that um, fan brush where I put it, and I'm going to bring this in. And this time, I'm going to go like this. Watch now. So. 
It's like as if that it's just broke. Put a little bit of paint on that brush now. I'm going to get a little bit of cardamom red. I'm going to mix a little bit of that. My palette's quite wet there. I don't want it, I want it quite dry actually. Cardamom red, a little bit of phyllo green. Take the excess off my brush. Now I'm going to put a little bit of shadow in there like that. So sweeping in like that. just picking up a bit of white and it's just crashing in like that Other ones that are they right on the other side of the rock look up the side of the lighthouse. It's a big one there. Oh, a stormy old sea, this one it really is. Let's get a bit of foam in. There you are, a little bit of foam in this sea now. Let's get this water line coming in there like that. Wipe your brush, wipe your brush, wipe your brush. Pull back. Some foamy, foamy things in there. Just work, work on this. You can put a lot more detail in this than I have got time for, basically. But you can see, I'm trying to give you an idea of. That's on the actually on the beach now. So let's just pull that straight back. Like that. What I'm gonna do is get my, I haven't used this one yet. This is a really nice soft one inch short flat. I'm gonna go straight down with this. I'm gonna pull that straight down like that. And 
then I'm going to get my blending brush now and I'm going to go over these. I'm getting in a mess today. My hands, I don't normally get messy like that. Very lightly, tickle the back of your hand. Tickle the back of your hand. There you go. Put that a little brush mark over that like that. And that's going to look as if it's wet sand. And then pull that back. Fluff up. Get those brush marks out. Try not to pull that brown in. You don't want to do that. Just very, very lightly tickling the back of your hand. Just getting this moonlight and all these lovely marks to, to move freely like that. And that looks like wet sand there now. And then we get this little tiny little um, brush, this little fan brush. And let's just put a little water line in on top of that. Like this. Taking the excess paint off my brush. Come on, clean that up. I'm going to fluff that up. I'll fluff that brush. Come on, break up. And I'm going to pull that back. And like that little lines look. And um, let's get our strip liner brush now. Where did I put my strip liner brush? There it is. Going into a bit of medium mix formula. I'm going to go into this. Arisen crimson and green mix. Now we just put out a few lines. Let's darken that a bit. Let's add a little bit of black to it. It's gone a bit thin. It's picked up a lot of moisture off my palette, and it does that sometimes. Put some black lines in like this. And it all adds to flavour of these waves. Now, I've been asked many a time um, over the years about doing watermarks like this and and I've said before that sometimes you've got to let the brush just do what it wants to do because you, you've got no control really. If you If you start doing this You'll be there forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm. Like that. And again, you can go through some light. Get some, get some white on your brush. Let's pick up a bit of white and stick it up. See how wet that palette's got? That's because there's too much um, water on the actual kitchen roll underneath. So make sure that you drain that out. And I didn't do that. But yeah, I done it because I wanted to show you. <laughs> Yeah, and let's just put a little few lines in. Like this. Oh, like Bob used to say, if you don't make those noises, it doesn't work, and it's true. Blending brush very very lightly tickle the canvas tickle 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 move all that about a bit there we are you can do that with acrylics because acrylics are, they don't like to stay they like to slide and if they want to slide let them slide but control the slide there you go that's what we want to do let's get a little bit of this onto my brush because I want to Darken that edge off there. There you go. I'll dry back now in a second. I'm going back into my detailing brush, or this uh, the script line the brush, I should say. And I'm just gonna Very lightly, put a little bit of paint under that moon and get in my little tiny filbert brush and I'm 
just going to scrub that in then. So I'm just moving the paint about the place now, like that's on there. It's called scrubbing in. You're getting that lovely moonlight effect. You can pick up a bit of light now. Scrub in a little bit of just a little tiny paint, a bit of paint on your brush, a little tiny bit of paint on your brush. I hope you've seen that. <laughs> Stop all to the cameras. And let's highlight a few of these little clouds like as if they're just picking up a little bit of that light and you can scrub these in now because this is dry now. I need a dry anyway. The joys of um, working with this is fantastic. It really is. I really do enjoy working with acrylics in this manner. And I'm going to put a light mark now in there. Like as if that's the light. It's shining. And a bit, a bit of yellow to it. There you go. And that's our light. Singing. Singing, singing, singing. I'll show you a little trick in a minute. Now, is this dry enough? So I've been waiting for that to dry off. Now, and uh, I'm going to put my fan brushes in the water. I'm going to have to clean these brushes in a second. I'm still using this this little um, filbert brush. Um, this is a number six, and I'm now going to go into some raw amber. I think it's no burnt amber, wasn't it? I think so. I don't know. I can't see the tickets anymore. <laughs> I, I, I do it digitally now. So, and this time. I'm gonna lightly drag. Now you can do this with a with a, with a palette knife, but I thought, well, let me show you a way of doing it with a, with a brush as well, because that's important. Because not everybody likes palette knives, and I'm just dragging that across like that, pulling down, finding a few shapes here and there. Don't cover it all. Leave some shadows. Leave some shadows and, and highlights in there. A little bit of yellow ochre. Just just like as if the light is catching a little bit there and there. Just catch that in there, like that. Let it be loose with this. You've got to be loose with this. You've got to be loose. And again, this time, I'm going to pick up my little filbert brush. And I'm going to use that as a blender, because you can use them as a blender as well. You can just tickle, tickle the canvas. <laughs> You've got to keep, keep, keep saying this to you, tickle on that canvas. It's the important thing to do. You want to move that paint. Let the paint wants to slide. It wants to move about. It doesn't want to be there. Move it about, but move it about in your way. A little bit of antique brown. Let's darken that off a bit there. A little bit of black. Just a touch of black on my brush, and then just find some shadows. Find some shadows. This is more advanced. Um, I wouldn't say this is a beginner by any short. No, it's not but it's something you can play with, you can practice with, and if we don't practice these things, we're never gonna get better. So please, please have a go. And um, it's important that we just keep going and going and going and going and going, it is. Now, some phyllo green, some yellow, a little bit of burnt umber, I got a nice colour there. Now I'm going to find a brush. What, can I use? what brush can I use? What brush can I use? I use this. Um, where's my bin? Oh, there it is. I'll use this fan brush. Tap it in, I got And just go. It's a bit bright, Clive. Too bright. Right. Just a hint of grass. It's quite dark. We want it quite dark. Black and yellow. Let's do a black and a yellow. Let's mix it. Because yellow is um, 
and Mars Black will make a nice green. There's a little bit of burnt umber in there, but. Put a tree or something in there. Yeah, let's put a tree or something in there. Could have a tree. A pom. We could have a tree ball. Heavy bin is going to have a tree. And it's a little tree for Bob. There we are. Oh, and actually, we can't do just one, can we? We'd have to do two because everyone needs a friend. There we are. There we are, Bob. That's for you. Let's uh, mix, mix a little bit of a bite of yellow to that now. A bit more yellow. Got a couple of different colours going on here now. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to just change my brush one second. I'm going to have to go into my scrubby brush. One second. Couldn't find my scrubby brush, so I've got another fan brush. Yeah, it's a, it's a, there we are. It's a natural bristle brush, that is. But, um, yeah. Okay, let's get a bit of yellow. I want a bit more yellow on my palette. Da, 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 da. There we go. Put a bit of yellow over there, a bit of yellow ochre to it, and a touch of black. Let's just get a nice green going on then. Right, that doesn't. Oh, we've got a bit of light coming off the. Oh, yeah, I've got a bit of light coming off that. We can correct that. We got a bit of light coming off that. <laughs> right, let's darken that up. Sure, we'll get around that one now. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Happy accident. <laughs> and I normally I get major disasters, <laughs> but I've actually got a nice. I've actually got a a little happy accident by there, and I'm quite happy with the way that went. Then, but um, wouldn't think so. But I am. And just put that grass in. This is going to be rough grass anyway, so. A couple of darker spots here and there and that. Like as if it's just, you can't tell whether it's grass or whether it's, it's just flick up. You can't tell whether it's grass or whether it's um, or like it's brackeny type of stuff. It could be, it could be the bracken, the flowers. I'm just mixing colour now, and um, just darken this one edge a bit. There we go. Could be bracken and stuff. Who knows? I don't know. It's not a real place. This is a place out of your mind, isn't it? So it can be anything it wants, really. Just put a bit of grass and things in there. We can get a bit of let's put a couple of bushes. 
interesting. Just to darken that up a bit. Look as if they are. There's a bit of shadow there. We've got to put a bit of shadow in because. It's going to lift. Let's get a bit of moonlight. Let's get a bit of moonlight on the grass. There we are. A little bit of moonlight shining through. Yeah. Just picking up a bit of moonlight on the grass like that. What we could do, what we could do, we could dry this and we could put a ray of light coming through. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's all wet look so when, I, when I'm when it's dry I think I'll I'm gonna drag a bit of bit of light coming down which you can do and I'll show you very quickly how you can do that you can mix a little bit of liquid clear you see maybe a little bit of yellow or something let's make sure that is really clean mix a little bit of liquid clear with, with a bit of, bit of yellow and just bring down some rays of light like that Marks, um, major disasters. Uh. Touch that up on his dry. Touch that up on his dry. <laughs> oh, I love it. Try to do too much too quick. Never do that. Never do too much too quick. Always. Just you know what I mean. You can see what I'm trying to do there, so I'll be fine. And um, that's a really, really nice night, and uh, strong winds, and I think it's looking really, really, really nice. And you can continue now if you wanted to um, put a bit more detail in on the waves, making sure you're using the same fan brush again. A bit of white, a bit more white this time. And you can you can put in that foam. Take as much time as you as, as you feel as if you need for this. Um, I'm not going to do much more. Um, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of white on on the strip liner brush, and I'm just going to run a few lines down like that. Run a few lines down like that. It's as if there's water running off there. And I get my blending brush now, very very lightly again. Tickling the canvas, taking the sharpness off this. And all it remains for me to do really today, and I'm going to sign this in red uh, in honour of my mentor. And I'm actually going to sign it in this corner. and. I'm just going to put my initials there like that. It doesn't help to have a long name. 
<laughs> so what it means me to say is thank you very much for joining me in the studio today have a go i hope you like this little painting you can do a little bit more work to it try and do it in stages if you want to let it dry i'll let it dry my name is clive from clive's art or uk have a good day good week a good month a good year because i don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this um but as time is relative on youtube so god bless please like comment and subscribe but please leave all the comments below in the comment box and i will see you in the next lesson nice. hey welcome thanks for stopping by it's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk